Thank you. Uh, good morning and welcome to the committee's third meeting in 2019. Could I ask you please to make sure your mobile phones are on silent and we move on to straight on to agenda item one, which is the UK Fisheries Bill uh, Legislative Consent Memorandum. This has been lodged by Fergus Ewing, the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy. The LCM covers the Fisheries Bill currently being considered by the UK Parliament. The UK Government regard areas of the Bill that require um, legislative consent from the Scottish Parliament. The Scottish Government agrees with the UK Government's assessment of where consent is needed, except in relation to clauses 18 to 19. 18 and 19 provide the Secretary of State uh, to set the UK's fishing opportunities, quota and effort, and duties for a calendar year. The UK Government does not consider that consent from the Scottish Gov Parliament is required sorry, is necessary, as its view of that these clauses relate to reserve matters. However, the Scottish Government believes that the legislative consent is necessary. The, government, the Scottish Government is seeking an amendment to Clause 18 so that determination made under Clause 18, insofar as they relate to Scotland, should be only taken with the consent of Scottish Ministers. The Scottish Government is also awaiting DEFRA's reasoning as to why they do not believe consent is required for clauses 20, 29 and 30. The Scottish Government indicates that the else in the LCM that it does not intend to lodge a legislative consent motion for the bill at this time. It considers that the approach taken to the bill is not consistent with devolved responsibilities. The Scottish Government is seeking urgent discussions with the UK Government on how to strengthen and protect the Seal Convention. The memorandum states that the Scottish Government will consider progress in these discussions in deciding its position on seeking legislative consent for the bill as its UK Parliament consideration proceeds. In its report the, on the delegated powers in the bill, the DPLR committee recommends that the committee as lead committee considers what role is envisaged for the Scottish Parliament in scrutinising the decision of the Scottish Ministers to consent to any regulations being made by the Secretary of State under certain provisions which relate to devolved powers. As the lead committee, we are required to reflect upon the memorandum and then consider whether we are content with its terms. We then will need to report our findings to the Parliament. Can I invite any members who would like to make a comment on this uh, to make it now? Stuart. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, convener. Um, I'm not going to talk about the policy content of the Fisheries Bill. I think that's for another day. Um, I'm only interested uh, at this stage in the process uh, by which the, 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 the UK Fisheries Bill is taken forward. I think the, uh, the fact that the Scottish Government and the UK Government haven't yet bottomed out in relation to clauses 20, 29 and 30, uh, whether there's an agreement or a disagreement uh, on uh, whether legislative consent is uh, required for these clauses uh, means that any uh, approval or withholding of approval that we might make today uh, has to be conditional because I think we need, we need, to, uh, we need to kind of know. Um, so, so on that basis, I think I'm relatively content to note with the caveat that we would wish the Scottish Government to keep us uh, up to date. In relation to what the DPLR committee has said in relation to regulations, uh, there is an interesting point that I think we should, should, should note as a committee as well, that there isn't a a legislative consent motion process in relation to regulations that are dealt with at Westminster. I don't think the, the Scottish Government, as far as I can determine, is objecting to that happening. But for Parliament, I think there is a wider issue. I'm, not, I'm uncertain as to how we should deal with that, to be, to be candid. In, in terms of what's actually happening, I have nothing to say. But, but, but it kind of, there is a little lacuna in our processes, I would suggest, and it might be that that's something uh, for the Standards Committee to, to, to contemplate, uh, not just in relation to this, but more, more widely. Thank you. Uh, John, I think you wanted to say something um, as well. Th thank you, convener. I, I would agree with uh, 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 
my colleague Stuart Stevenson, I think fishing is a hugely important issue. So to that extent that there is a lot of common ground between the two, the UK and the Scottish Government, I think that that's very helpful. I support the Scottish Government's position on Clause 6, 18 here, and I believe consent is required. So I, I wonder, one of our proposals is, and rightly, that we're kept updated by the Scottish Government. And I wonder if, similarly, given that there are always two sides to, to a, a position, whether we could similarly write the UK Government to ask them to explain their position. And particularly, I, 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 Paragraph 14, where the, the Scottish Parliament's confidence in the operation of the Legislative Consent Convention um, could be restored. I, I think everyone having confidence in the SOUL um, system is important, so if that could be considered as well, please. Thank you, John. Uh, Mike, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as the content is concerned of the issue, I think I'm agreeing with, with John just now, but uh, the part on the process, um, just thinking this through, <coughs> our role as a committee... Correct me if I'm wrong, Convene. Our role as a committee is to scrutinise Scottish ministers giving consent to an LCM. Now, there's no LCM before us, um, and I think the proposal is to ask the Scottish Government to keep us informed as to what's happening down the line mm -hmm. so that when LCM comes forward, we then have a role. I think it only muddies the water if the committee starts writing to the, to the UK Government. I think we should be focused on on what our role actually is. OK, uh, John, you want to come back and then please... If, if I may answer that, um, I can see that that's a point of view. However, our job is to scrutinise also what we're told by the Scottish Government. And similarly, no one had any issues when we rightly took evidence from Mr Gove and the important issues um, surrounding agriculture. So I, I think it's important that we, we get uh, both versions of events, please. OK. Peter, you wanted to say something and then uh, John Mason. Well, I'm very much in, in support of Mike's position as, as far as writing to the, the UK government is concerned. I think our, our role and our responsibility lies here and lies with the Scottish government, and I, I think that's where it should remain. <clears throat> yes, well, I agree our responsibility is to examine the Scottish government, but that includes normally taking evidence from parties who potentially disagree with the Scottish government. So uh, I think the more evidence we get, the better. Uh, Jamie. Very briefly, uh, in your opening statement, convener, you mentioned that the Scottish Government was awaiting feedback from UK ministers in DEFRA. Uh, rather than writing to the UK Government for that information, could I just suggest that the information that is shared with the Scottish Government is shared with the committee? Okay. okay. I, th I, th I think there's some way to go before we bottom out uh, the, this whole issue on the fisheries bill. And uh, taking into account what people have said and the general opinion uh, round uh, the committee table, I think uh, it, would be in, it would be right uh, to note to the Scottish Government uh, the contents of the me memorandum, but request also that we are updated. And I believe that the UK Government should update us and keep us informed, as well as the Scottish Government, on its proposed amendments to the bill. I think that would help us make an informed decision. And that should be on the discussions and the operation, uh, as well, of the Sewell Convention, to make sure we're happy with that. And I think we should also call on the Scottish Government to provide details of how it intends to ensure that there is a role for the Scottish Parliament in scrutinising any decisions by Scottish ministers to consent to any regulations made under clauses 9, 3, 11, 2, 31, 1 and 33 of the Bill, uh, which are being made by the Secretary of State. I think that seems to be a general view round the table. Uh, Stuart? Um, just on that last point, I'm, I'm not fundamentally disagreeing with how you've, you've laid it out, but I think the Parliament is master of the Parliament's process, and you know it's not for the government to decide. Uh, although it would be helpful if the government acts in the, the way that you describe, and and I, d I did suggest that we perhaps have the standards committee invite the standards committee to consider that. Now it may be there isn't support in the, uh, around the table for that proposal, but I'd like to just test the waters on that particular aspect, if I may. On the principle that the Parliament is responsible for Parliament's processes, not the government. Okay. Does d does anyone have a view on that? My I'm full of agreement, and we've got to be very careful that. Um, I objected last time when a minister suggested what the committee should be doing. 
And I think that's entirely the wrong thing, the wrong approach. We, are, as a parliamentary committee, Parliament should be in charge of our own affairs, and I agree entirely with what Stuart's just said. So, by calling on the uh, government, the Scottish government, um, to ensure that there's a role and for us to look at that, surely that is, is, is what we're asking and, and, and believe is the right way as a committee to move forward, Stuart. Uh, no, 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 I'm perfectly content that we, 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 we insist the Scottish Government respects the Scottish Parliament, and I'm no difficulty with that. I'm merely making the additional point that it seems, and I suspect Mr Rumbles is agreeing with me, that there is a potential, and I only put it at that level for there being a lacuna in our processes, that the Standards Committee could, could look at it over two minutes and decide that they disagree and not look at it. It's up to them. We don't control what they do. I'm only suggesting we invite them to think about it. That's all. Well, we could certainly include that within the report and, and, and see, see what position they take on it. That may be a, a, a decision for them, and we can then reflect on that decision. Are we happy, therefore, to move forward along the lines that I've suggested with, with that addition within the report? Okay, we then now move on, thank you, to agenda item two, uh, which is uh, an item under the European Union Withdrawal Act. This is the Trans-European Transport and Connecting Europe Facility uh, EU Withdrawal Revocation Regulations 2019. We have received a consent notification in relation to one UKSI as detail on the, uh, detailed on the agenda. This covers the Connecting Europe Facility. The instrument is being laid in the UK Parliament in relation to the European Union Withdrawal Act, and this SI is categorised as A to the extent that the transition from the EU to a UK framework would involve no policy change being made, but a simple revocation. Does anyone have any comments on this? Uh, Stuart. Um, ju just the obvious comment that uh, this has to be decided by tomorrow, and in terms of time, that's not a very satisfactory place to be. I perfectly understand the logistic issues there are around this whole business and civil servants having to work extremely long hours to do it, but I do think we should uh, formally note that. No, I, th I think it would be important also to note the extremely heavy workload of the committee in trying to achieve all that we're trying to do in relation to transport bills and other bills that we've been asked to consider. So my question is, does the committee agree to write to the Scottish Government to confirm its contempt for the consent for the UK SI referred to in the notification and uh, to be given and to note a request to a response from the Scottish Government on the wider policy matters that have been identified, having also noted the short timescale involved and the heavy uh, commitment on this committee? We are agreed. Thank you. Uh, we are now going to move into private for the next part of the meeting.